is this crap. Cindy, I'm glad you made it. Just relax yourself and have a good time. Girl, get a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I do, I feel you. I've been going through some mm -hmm. stuff with this model at the agency, and she's mm -hmm. trying to take me through some things, but we'll deal with it. Handle it, girl. What is this? Really? Are you serious? Who the hell is that? Charlie, go easy. It's too early in the day. Hold off on that scotch. We need to talk. How are you, Charlie? Well, I was having a Kodak moment with my best friend here until y'all showed up. <laughs> You're a little early, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> yeah, I know, Charlie. Early is a good thing. I have a busy day ahead of me. Victoria will brief you as to why I called this meeting. Gentlemen, bear in mind I'm only here to review information and strategy that's relevant to our mutual interests. Steve, Mr. Mayor, I don't work for City Hall, but this new district attorney you hired is, is barking up the wrong tree into your affairs. She's interfering with our partners. That's not good. That may be true, but this DA works for me. According to the laws in place at City Hall, the mayor can hire or fire anyone he wishes. There's enough crap in here to put you away for the next 20 years. I'm here to give you a choice. You can take a plea bargain or we take it through the court system. What do you want to do? <laughs> Look, I ain't cutting no plea deal with you or anyone else in this joint. What's the charge? Really? You tell me. There's enough evidence in here to put your behind under the jail with no parole. Give me a name, and I'll let you walk out of here a free man. Look, 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 I ain't no snitch. The charges won't stick, because you goons ain't got nothing on me. You are struggling in the real world, Marty. Yet you're balling and spending big time. A man with a nickel and dime job is hustling somewhere. Here's my scenario. You are were employed by Watts Construction Company on James Island. It says your employer at that time paid you 20 bucks an hour. How is it that a low life like this get busted on a yacht with over half a million dollars of unmarked bills? Who's from the money? Who you protecting? Who the hell are you? Who am I? I could be your worst nightmare. Or I could be the DA that could keep your behind out of jail. That's the girl I was telling you about. The model. So you serious about suing me? Well, guess what, Cindy? I'm suing you, your little friend over here, and your company. Now sweat on that. Hold up. Wait a minute. Don't bust up in here like you own nothing. You started this, and I'm gonna finish it. You only got yourself to blame for this mess. I never thought you would do something like this to me. 
because if it wasn't for my fashion designs, your company would be non-existent. Your last chance, Marty. Give me a name, and you walk out of here a free man. I'm gonna see my lawyer. I ain't talking to no crazy woman about nothing. Before I say another word, get me my lawyer. Look, 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 I ain't no criminal. All that loot your officers found on the boat don't belong to me. I was just hanging out in the waterfront with some babes, you know, having a few drinks, you know, letting it flow. You know, getting a few, few hugs and a few laughs. You know, no harm done. Give me a name. Look, lady, what you're asking me to do is bigger than you and me. Sure, I ain't snitching on nobody. If you want some answers, I suggest you start looking in your own backyard. That's all I'm gonna say. Hmm, backyard. City Hall. What about the situation with Marty Jocko Huffman? <laughs> Why was he arrested in the first place? Your police department commissioner got a tip from your DA. Who is the one who initiated the arrest? Let's come up with a plan to solve this craziness. The district attorney's job termination may not be the best option. Well, what do you suggest? Look, I don't have time for a court date. I'm too busy. Do I need to leave? Hell no, I own the place. I gave Miss Summers a chance at fortune and fame but obviously she doesn't understand the nature of doing business. I had to rob Peter to pay Paul to make things happen for you. This company went out on a limb to promote and market your designs. Your fashion line would be a disaster if it wasn't for my company putting in the sweat and tears. Now you go sweat on that. All that does not matter. Like you old folks say, I'm Diana Ross, and you two are the Supremes. <laughs> Stop in the name of love. Hmm. Who says that? Diana Ross. <laughs> you can save that Motown story for the judge. Now you started this, you want out, I'll see you in court. Whatever. Bye Felicia. Have a nice day. Felicia! See ya! Wouldn't wanna be ya! Judge McGinnis? Yes, I'm Judge McGinnis. Uh, your assistant at the front office uh, let me in. Do you have a moment to talk? How may I help you? I'm Major Williams. I'm the new prosecutor for the city of North Charleston. Last Friday, I was summoned to meet with you. What exactly can I do for you? So, you're the new court's prosecutor. <laughs> you don't look so tough to me. Am I supposed to look tough, Your Honor? Now, how many innocent people have you sent to prison for a crime they didn't commit? <laughs> innocent people? I don't lock up innocent people, Judge. Hey, if they do the crime, they do the time. <laughs> Is that right? That's right. <laughs> well, all due respect, Your Honor. Why am I here? Is there a problem with my investigative department? I don't have a problem with your department, but I do have a concern. Okay. Please have a seat. Uh, I'm good, I'm good. Okay. You've been assigned a court case with the young girl that I want to help. Now, if you will, I want to go off record in speaking about her circumstances and misfortunes. Ex parte communication? I'm not at liberty to discuss anything unless it's with my team. You ought to know that, Your Honor. Look, I didn't ask you here to discuss anything. I asked you here to listen. Can you do that? Can you listen? Charlie, Victoria. I'm happy about my job as mayor of Charleston. I've been on this block way too long to let this district attorney take me down. Listen up, you two. I've got a plan. I ask you here to listen. Can you do that? Okay. I'm all ears. There's a 17-year-old girl who's fallen to bad luck in this system, and I want to help her. We all deserve a second chance. Now you're here because I don't want you to look like a fool when I dismiss the case. A fool? Judge McGinnis, do you realize what you're saying? 
This young lady has been given numerous opportunities yet she continues to commit the same crime. Now that she's 17, she can be tried as an adult. And like I said earlier, you commit the crime, you do the time. When is her first court appearance? If I'm not mistaken, it's in about three weeks. Is it possible for me to see her? No. It will show partiality towards the case. It will not happen. Okay, let's do this. All of your court dates are on my court docket. So, why don't I put them on hold until I return from vacation in 10 weeks? Will that give you enough time to think about it? You can't do that, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, you think it's not allowed? Well, you think again. Now, your workload won't get any easier. You know you're breaking all the rules in the judicial system. Well, in my courtroom, rules are meant to be broken. So you have a great day, Mr. Prosecutor. It's nice meeting you, Your Honor. Nice meeting you, too. <laughs>